All rotten potatoes are those thinly sliced potatoes with that creamy, cheesy sauce smothering all of them that usually takes hours to make in your own kitchen. I've got a recipe for you and it'll only take about 20 minutes. What is up you guys? It is Carly here and you are officially cooking with Carly. We are talking about one of my favorite side dishes today, og rotten potatoes. And if you're not making them out of a box in the microwave, like I did many, many times when I was first married, making this recipe at home in your own kitchen generally takes hours, literally hours in the oven. It's crazy. But using our Instant Pot, we can cook those potatoes like that. Well, that was a very wimp, wimpy snap. Like that. <laughs> we cook the potatoes and make the sauce all in the pot at the same time, so there's no need for extra pans. One thing to clean right here, and then we'll broil it all in the oven to get the nice, bubbly, crispy top. Let's talk about our ingredients. I have just five regular baking russet potatoes here. And our sauce is comprised of evaporated milk, chicken broth, minced onion, and minced garlic. You can definitely use fresh of both of these if you like. This is just what I always have on hand and I think it tastes great. And then we also have a mixture of cheeses back here. I just use what I have on hand. Today it's some cheddar cheese, some Parmesan cheese, and then some sharp white cheddar. And salt and pepper to season. First thing we want to do is peel, wash, and slice our potatoes. We want these potatoes thin, 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 just sliced. I will show you how to do it. Let's get peeling. <laughs> There's a garbage can over here, but by the looks of my floor, you wouldn't know it. I'm gonna head back to the sink and rinse these potatoes off and then we'll slice them. After you're done slicing your potatoes, you'll want to either toss them into your inner liner or if you have a steamer basket, toss them into your steamer basket. This makes the whole process a lot easier, but you do not have to have a steamer basket to make this recipe. Let's move this stuff out of the way. So you can see the slice a little better. So we want these sliced thin. So we're just going to have round slices of our potato. It's important to slice them thin or else they won't be cooked all the way from your Instant Pot. If they're too thick, then the cook time won't be enough for them to cook all the way. So make sure that they are then probably about a quarter of an inch thick. Make sure to break your potatoes apart when you're putting them into the steamer basket. If they're stuck together, then they all won't cook evenly. Let's talk about the cook time for these potatoes. They are actually going to cook in the Instant Pot for zero minutes. Yep, that's a thing, zero minutes. So you'll, Adjust the cook time down to zero like you would normally adjust it up or down to your certain number. It will actually go down to zero. And this just means that your Instant Pot will heat up and build pressure. And once it has come to pressure, it will beep. And then you're going to release that pressure. And this will cook our potatoes perfectly. Hey, and do me a favor while we are waiting on me to slice these potatoes. Like this video, subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. I've got lots of great content coming up. If your potatoes are like giant potatoes, you may want to cut them in half just so that they'll cook all the way. The last of our potatoes are going into my steamer basket here. It's time to get these into the Instant Pot. We're going to use one cup of chicken broth as our liquid to get our Instant Pot working. And we're going to put our seasonings into our liquid. This is actually the base of our sauce, the creamy, cheesy sauce. Some minced onion, one tablespoon here. If you wanna use fresh, do a quarter cup of fresh minced onion and then one teaspoon of dried minced garlic or you can do four fresh cloves. Season with salt and pepper. 
Remember, you can always add more salt and pepper later, so I tend to under season here, and then when we're putting our sauce together and after we add our cheese, you can always adjust, adjust. <laughs> after we melt in our cheese, you can always adjust those seasonings. We're going to hold off on the cheese and our evaporated milk for now. Those will go in after we pressure cook. Potatoes are going right on top of our liquid. Let's close our lid and then cook for zero minutes. I'm going to push my manual button and if you don't have a manual button, find your pressure cook button and adjust to zero minutes. I like to use evaporated milk for this recipe for a few reasons. First, it's shelf stable so I can keep it in my pantry in the can unopened for a long time. So I have all of the ingredients on hand easily. And second, there's a lot less fat and calories in evaporated milk than there is in heavy cream. But if you would prefer to use heavy cream or half and half or regular milk or something like that, it would work well in this recipe. Just keep in mind that evaporated milk and heavy cream are both very creamy. Half and half and regular milk, you won't get as creamy of a sauce. Just remember to never put any of the dairy into the Instant Pot before it's pressure cooking unless you're using that heavy whipping cream all of the others will curdle. So that's why we keep it out until after the pressure cooking is done. The pin just popped up, so that means it'll be another minute or so until the inside of the pot has actually reached the highest pressure where it needs to be, and then it will beep again. We will release that pressure, quick release it. And if you need more information about releasing and all of the crazy lingo that we use when we talk about our Instant Pot, Make sure to check out my Instant Pot Lingo video and my Instant Pot Beginners video. It will take care of you and help you succeed with your Instant Pot. There it is, it's beeping. Okay, reach pressure, zero minutes. Let's move that knob over to release the pressure. I'm a little teapot short. Here is my handle, here is my spout. The potatoes and your steamer basket will be hot if you've used your steamer basket. If you haven't used your steamer basket, just leave your potatoes in there and you can mix the sauce all together. Since mine are in a steamer basket though, I'm going to remove the potatoes and pour them into my baking dish here for when we broil them. Let's just set this aside for now while we mix together our sauce. Let's turn our Instant Pot on to saute, and you will do this whether your potatoes are in or not. You'll need to press cancel first, and then your saute button. We want saute more. To our Instant Pot, one half cup of evaporated milk is going to go in. Whisk it together. This will create just enough sauce to cover all of your potatoes. If you like yours extra saucy, feel free to add up to one cup of evaporated milk. Let's just wait for this to start simmering. And once it starts bubbling, boiling, simmering, we're going to add in the majority of our cheese here. I have about one and a half cups of cheese shredded. We're going to add one cup of it to our sauce and leave that remaining half cup to sprinkle on top of the potatoes before they go into the oven. So our cheese here is going to do two things for us. It will thicken our sauce and it will flavor our sauce. It's important to test your sauce, taste it before adding more salt and pepper because cheese is already salty. Everything is starting to bubble and boil in here. Now let's slowly add in one cup of our shredded cheese. Your sauce will thicken more as it cools. It will boil and bubble even more in the oven while it's broiling for a few minutes and then as those potatoes cool it will thicken even more all right let's pour these over our potatoes you're going to want your oven mitts again because this liner is going to be hot i'm going to press cancel just move those potatoes around to make sure that the sauce is nicely distributed let's sprinkle the rest of this cheese on 
We'll broil for about five minutes. Just keep an eye on it because it can go from nothing to burnt really fast. Keep an eye on it. Once that sauce is boiling and the top is starting to turn a nice golden brown, you can pull it out of the oven. Our potatoes just came out of the oven. They've got a nice bubbly, creamy look to them. We're going to let them sit and cool slightly just so our sauce thickens up nicely and then they're ready to serve. Here we have one of my favorite side dishes. It goes great with everything from burgers to pot roast. Agra and potatoes will always have your back. Add this to your menu for the next week. Your family will love it and let me tell you, you'll be blown away at how easy it is and how delicious it is. Can I eat it now? Hot potato, hot potato. I want some of the sauce. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Those potatoes are like perfect because they're not mushy, but they're not like crunchy, you know? They just have the perfect amount of bite to them. Mm. Mm, perfect. <laughs> 